Our transmission controller is so excited about that uh, innovation. So he wanted you to see that first. But definitely, we're actually talking about that, which is very, very interesting. Now, in the house, I have Chimomwe. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming as well. Yeah, we've had you on this program before, and uh, you've talked about you came through with IAS, and also you're with another organization as well, which actually is into innovation and, and creativity as well. Exactly. So tell us about this organization a little bit, because I, I don't want to take the honor of giving the full name and details when you're here. Okay, so basically, we are called the Zamtrain Institute of Creative Technology. We are um, an upcoming uh, tech hub, a think tank, basically. So what we do is we get uh, uh, young kids in our community between the age of 13 and 14. Then we bring them in, we get to meet up with them, and uh, we get to teach them about coding, mm -hmm. building stuff, innovation, mm -hmm. computers, and basically science and technology mm. yes interesting so you teach i like to call them young children or i like to call them young stars not youngsters but young stars young and upcoming stars and um, so you're training them to become innovative you're training them to become independent at a very young age exactly. am i right exactly okay exactly. so you teach them how to create things how to design things how's that been going so far um it's been a challenge while well, well, we're getting started, but now that we've got into the flow, now we, we are, we're actually moving on pretty smoothly. But the only thing, the biggest challenge we had was where to operate from. Mm -hmm. So there was a certain school that gave us a place where we were operating mm -hmm. from. So they gave us some space where we get to meet on Saturdays in one of the classrooms. Yeah. So that was the biggest challenge, but now everything is moving on smoothly because we've got a place. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Now, we just saw a, a sneak peek of um, uh, a nice big box. I like to call it just a big box, but probably you get to explain everything during uh, later on. And our transmission controller, Carlos, will actually uh, replay that clip so you can actually see it. But before that, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see now. Okay. Um, that uh, innovation is Zambia's first uh, pencil and pen vending machine. Mm. Yeah, so we sat down with our group of kids. We wanted to think of something that could help uh, students and mm -hmm. pupils in schools and, and the like. So we thought of that idea and we started making plans. Mm -hmm. We made about five versions that failed and that's the number six mm -hmm. version that's actually now worked. So that whole thing there is a machine that allows you to be able to you just go up to it you put your money uh, beat one quacha then you just spin and you mm -hmm. get your money out of it you okay. get your your pen or your pencil out of it oh, okay. yes so you don't need anybody to sell or anything like that you just really put it somewhere. so it's, it's just a vending machine that you just put in you put in just coins or you can put in paper money um at the moment it just works with uh coins okay yes yes, yes it just uses coins mm -hmm. yeah so uh yeah yeah interesting I, I i'm i'm a curious person because this sounds like a very good business venture as well and uh, you know how far are you looking to are you, are you going to expand it here or are you just going to limit it to just a small location or are you going to think of expanding it even nationwide or throughout the sub-saharan region um our hope is to go you see our hope is to make sure it reaches as far as it can go mm -hmm. if we can be able to reach other countries in Africa it's even better because it will develop Zambia mm -hmm. will be able to, to bring in Forex into the country which is is good uh, for for our country and also for the development of new technology because this thing is going to benefit us as an organization we'll mm -hmm. be able to buy some computers for our kids you know it'll grow so it will help us grow it will help even more innovation it will even inspire out there I know there are people with great ideas in mm -hmm. Zambia indeed, uh, yeah, indeed. and even just seeing something can inspire them to do. Maybe there's someone who's got the, the next thing that can drive this economy or the country forward. Mm -hmm. And they just sit and maybe thinking they can't do it. But mm -hmm. just by maybe seeing such a thing or having a place where they think, oh, I can go to Zamtra, maybe they can help me materialize my idea. Indeed. Yes. Okay. So we'll be, we'll be right back. Uh, I'm, I still have Chimwemo in the house. So, but we just want to show you once again at what we're talking about. So let's look at the new vending machine, pencil and pen vending machine. So have a look.
So, uh, definitely, Carlos, keep running it in the background. I'd love to see that as we talk. So, I'm actually interested, uh, looking at how you were creating that uh, that vending machine. And who was the boilermaker again? The guy doing the welding? Um, that's uh, a certain guy from the market who was welding uh -huh. the, the frame of there. We gave him the plans, then he was creating the frame okay. of, the, of the machine. Interesting. I, I was hoping he was part of the team as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, most definitely, if we can get him interested, then he can come on board. That's not a problem. Okay, no. so tell us about the organization itself as well. Um, are you getting any funding from anywhere or are you just generating your own income? Um, at the moment, we're not getting any funding from anywhere. Mm -hmm. So basically, we rely on... Uh, that's the main reason why we thought and said, no, we need to make something that will be able to go out there and fund our institution. Okay. Yes, that's how we came up with this project, mm -hmm. to see that it can be able... So we can become self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, we don't have any funding from anywhere. No. Okay. Yeah. So we were able to see, uh, you know, uh, kids actually using the vending machine. You said you tried it about, what, five times, the sixth time you succeeded. And uh, I'm guessing that's the very first vending machine and it's already working. What school is that again? Uh, uh, that that's uh, Cedar Mount Christian Academy mm -hmm. in Cabanana. Okay. Yes. All right. Interesting. I'm, I'm, very, I'm a very curious person. I like to learn things. And looking at that project, is it something you'd like others to actually develop on their own? Or do they need to come to you and seek plans and rights for it? Um, actually, uh, they have to come and seek plans. Uh, what's this? Uh, rights from us. Mm -hmm. But... The way it's going to be is people can be able to get the machines from us when we start the production phase of it. People will be able okay. to access them from us, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Interesting. So that looks like a very long-term base. So it means it's very accessible for, for to schools only, or are you looking at and advancing it to other institutes? Um, schools, colleges, universities, even office buildings like in just these in a house or somewhere where there's a lot of people who need pens mm -hmm. because looking at uh, the way uh, it used to be in the in the in, in the in the in the past we used to buy pens on the street mm -hmm. but now you can't buy such things you have yeah. to look for a shop mm -hmm. but if you're going to work and you find yourself somewhere where we can place that you're able to to buy it yes okay in another interesting thought um well something i noticed about the vending machine I i'm actually not very clear about is the technicality of it is it an electronic machine or is it just a mechanical machine it's a mechanical machine okay yeah so it doesn't require electricity no you just need to put it in a place and it works exactly okay exactly. i'm interested I, i'm I, i'm gonna ask you a whole lot of questions <laughs> if you get uncomfortable that's your problem but <laughs> but now so uh carlos i'm sure you can actually help us uh, run that clip again in the background and uh so that people can actually see what we're talking about um I'm, I'm, I'm very eager to understand more about it and the designs of it and hopefully our transmission controller is going to play it um yeah okay but either way yes so we're looking at this uh, just from the uh, from the beginning it looks like it was a lot of work actually creating it how how is the response with the first machine so far looking at it um the response is good, okay. uh, especially with the kids. The kids are very excited, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, I think in, in Zambia here, mm -hmm. in other countries, uh, these machines are very, uh, very accessible to everyone. But in Zambia here, I think I've only seen one vending machine somewhere. Okay. I think it's not the airport, somewhere. But those are those where you go to buy drinks yeah. and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But this, for the kids, it's also exposure for them to use such a uh, kind of a machine. So they're very excited. The kids... Mm -hmm. And you know, kids learn very easily. That's to them, it's learns. very, very exciting mm -hmm. to use. Yeah, yeah. We could see a young, a young lady there, or a little girl actually. She got a pencil out of it, and uh, we see we actually saw a pen actually coming through, coming out of it as well. So. Um, did you design like a pool table? I'm curious. <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a layman. Uh -huh. That's kind of technicality. <laughs> But, you know, what prompted you to design this? Why are you designing a machine like this? Um, it was a group discussion between uh, myself and the kids. Mm -hmm. We wanted to look at how we can help students. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, in these boarding schools where they're, you know, in a boarding school far away mm -hmm. in the bush, mm -hmm. uh, they probably don't have access to 
to a pen, a simple mm-hmm. thing as a pen or yeah. a pencil. Mm-hmm. So in areas like that, wanted to see how we can help. Even even uh, in these just local schools, yeah. you know, instead of kids go leaving your school to go and buy a pen, because most tuck shops don't usually have the pen they or a run pencil. Out of pens, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the kids can just walk out the class and say, oh, I'm going to buy a pencil outside. Um, they're able to buy a pen just like okay that. so have you tried presenting this to these uh, pen producing organizations like bic and uh, Z- uh is it zampen or something not uh, yet no okay i'm, I'm actually curious to food I'm, I'm a very curious person and this is technology that we're looking at and what else are we hoping to see um in future from you guys um most like from the organization which <laughs> is called the zam train institute of exactly. creative technology mm. um we hope to grow uh we want to be able to build a lot of different things you know from agriculture processing machines mm-hmm. you know there are certain things that we can do as well here in zambia and if we do them they're gonna be affordable we'll be able to fix them unlike buying from other countries all the time because mm-hmm. if you buy something it gets broken you can't fix it mm-hmm. but if you build something if it gets broken you know exactly how it works mm-hmm. and it's cheap and you can also sell it to other countries and mm-hmm. and the like so uh, we hope to go into agriculture we hope to build more vending machines different types that uh, use different products mm-hmm. and also be able to just grow our mm-hmm. institution probably in the future we should become something like a university of technology and science something mm-hmm. big like that mm-hmm. that's what we hope to do in the future interesting yeah you seem to have a very young team of brains actually working with you how's that going so far um it's fun it's a bit difficult it's like herding cats you know <laughs> they just want to do whatever they want to do you know they're spontaneous and the like mm-hmm. but they're very creative you know kids have no limit they don't limit themselves that's the thing yeah. so you, you find they'll come up with ideas of things that you can't even think of you'd be like, okay, let's give it a try. And you'll find it's a good idea mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because even certain uh, certain uh, solutions to the machine as we were designing it mm-hmm. came accidental. Really? We're just thinking and one of the kids just says, why don't we do it like this? And we give it a try and it works mm-hmm. just like that. Oh, okay. So it's fun. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a lot of work, but it's interesting. You know, their minds are fresh. They're very creative. Mm-hmm. It's fun. And at least being able to keep them out of trouble, it's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Zam train. Yes. Zam Train Institute. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming through to my No, thank you for having me. All right. We hope to have you again. No, thank you very much. Okay. All right. This is CBC Business Morning. And, uh, well, that was our Zam Train. I like to call him coordinator and uh, also an innovator, I like, a scientist as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. An inventor, innovator has actually come up with a new form of vending who's actually with us uh, today. Chimwemwe, thank you so much for coming through once again. No, and, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely. So we'll be right back with the Forex race after this as my colleague Nisa might come back or I just might cover it. Okay. Thank you. Pond 5.